So, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure you've heard already, we narrowly, and I mean narrowly, averted breaching the debt ceiling literally at the 11th hour. Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell on Wednesday hammered out a deal in the Senate. The House caved and voted it through. And the deal itself, from where we were, literally from where we were, isn't actually that bad yet. And that's the kicker yet. And we're going to get to, to what's going to happen beyond here. But here's the details of the deal itself. The government shutdown is over. The government, again, will be open for business. However, it is only extended through January the 15th, and it is also only extended at sequestration levels. As we talked about before, the Democrats' position in this entire negotiation has already was a major cave to Republicans. They were using the Republicans' budget. That's been the case all along, but we knew that going in, and so that's not really a surprise. Uh, but the government's open again. That's good. The debt limit has been extended until February the 7th. And here's an interesting tidbit about that. That is subject to the vote of congressional disapproval, which Obama can veto. And that actually could be big. Congress would actually have to vote to not raise the debt ceiling. So that is potentially big news. There will be back pay for furloughed workers. One minor concession was there is a new income verification for recipients of subsidies under Obamacare. Many progressives are saying it's not actually concession, a concession because that already existed in the law. David Dayen's a little worried about that. We'll have to see how that's actually implicated, but it's not a major deal and also nothing that would be worth crashing the economy over. Uh, there's also relief funding in the bill for the floods of Colorado, which we're unable to get through because of the government shutdown. Uh, but lastly, and this is where it gets, gets tricky here, uh, the bill established a bipartisan budget conference to come up with a long-term spending plan by December the 13th. Another, uh, it's not, a, is it a super committee? Is it not a super committee? Whatever. It's a budget conference, uh, bipartisan conference. So that's where we need to worry. Uh, and that's where we as progressives need to start, uh, frankly, yelling and screaming and waving our arms around now that we do not want a grand bargain, that we do not want, want cuts to Social Security. We don't want cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, um, you know, which as we've said time and time again, that grand bargain, those actual cuts, is something that President Barack Obama wants. He's stated it several times. He's offered it several times. It is something that he wants. Uh, and so we need to stop that. But other than the actual starting point, starting from the sequester level spending, which already happened, the Democrats actually held firm on these negotiations, which frankly was a little surprising. Frankly, it was, it was shocking. I was fairly certain that they would cave, but they didn't. Uh, but then again, you know, looking at this realistically, it's only for a few months, and then this whole charade pretty much starts all over again. But it is good news. It's definitely good news that the, the debt ceiling wasn't actually breached. The economy didn't collapse. The furloughed government workers are going back to work. The government is opening up again. And all of that is actually a very, very positive thing. Now, the real work begins, and that work is to make sure that the damn Democrats don't sell us down the river with these upcoming negotiations. Let's get to work, people. We'll be right back.